Hey everybody, I'm Vera Stewart and welcome to The Very Vera Show. I am so excited. For the third time, I have my good friend and special guest, Virginia Willis, joining me. I'm so happy you're I here. I love being on your show. And didn't we have fun last night? We always have fun. Oh, we we, just, have we just had the best time, and I'm just so excited. It's just always great to get back with you. You know, we stay connected yep. throughout the year, and in a few minutes, I'm going to tell you more about what in the world is going on with Virginia, because she's got quite a bit going on. But this is her third time visiting, and the first time you were with us, it was winter. Right. Do you remember that? Yes. And then the last time you were here was last spring, mm -hmm. and we got to kind of put a different twist on things because right. it was a different time of the year, and we, we always just have a lot of fun on the show. Love so today show. we are doing? Soups and stews. Soups and stews. So we're going to get started. Our first soup that I want to show you how to make is a grit soup. Oh. Love have you ever that. Had grit soup? I have not. <laughs> it's like thin grits. Well, and you, we were talking about this great little book that you did, yeah. the grits book. And so this is in that in that in, cookbook. In book, so right? what happened was um, they asked me to write a book about grits, of course. And so what what I sort of wanted to do was to combine traditional Southern recipes, and then I looked outside the South to different cultures where they had polenta, right, or or masa or different corns and sort of shape those for grits. So this is actually based on a traditional Italian polenta soup. Oh. And so what you have there is you have some onions. Gosh, that were, aren't they smelling yes. amazing? Yes. Natalie Dupree always told me that when she would do a demonstration, it didn't matter what you were doing, if you cooked onions, people would come. I know, right. <laughs> but look what I'm gonna do here. So I'm gonna sprinkle a little bit of salt, coarse kosher salt, on this chopped garlic. Okay. And what that's going to allow me to do is that's going to break down the garlic even more. And oh. so it acts like as an abrasive. Gosh, what a great tip. Are y'all listening to this out there? And this is wonderful, especially when you have raw garlic. Because you know, if you have yes. this big piece of garlic, it's 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 hot, it's sharp, it right. sort of blows out your taste buds. So do that and then watch this. This is a, one of my favorite things sort of treat your knife like a palette knife and press the garlic against oh. the board. Isn't that cool? Yes. And so what we'll do is now that those onions are clear and translucent. God, I love the even the sound of that. The kitchen sounds God, you have to, like a yeah, it's, paste. it's beautiful. So now I'm gonna add this. So I okay. to take that off. Yes. So we cook that like 45 to 60 seconds. Okay. Just enough so the flavors of the mm. garlic come out. And then here I have um, some whole grain stone ground grits. All right. And you always want to look for whole grain. And I do have some flour, which is going to help thicken it. But if, if someone were gluten free, they could use all grits. Okay. Just a little bit less liquid. Okay, because there's starch in the grits after all. Oh, that's all right. another great tip. So I'm going to, I'll add the grits in and you'll just you can just kind of stir that yes oh I just love how yellow it is too Isn't that pretty yeah I know and so the only difference of course so people ask me that quite a bit uh, writing a grits book people ask me lots of grits questions <laughs> I'm sure so what's the difference between yellow and, and white grits it's just the color of the corn that it came from right. it doesn't really whether make it any was difference. the silver queen or the right so now you have some hot chicken stock and it's got to be hot of course, you know this, because right. if you add cold stock to flour, it'll lumpy, make a lumpy, lumpy, lumpy. I'm going to ask you to ladle that in. Oh my gosh, it oh, smells so yay. good. So I think the thing is to, to consider is that polenta or grits, you know, it's poor people food. It was traditionally poor people food. Oh, well then I'll be eating a lot of this. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh. So, so, but you know, it's warm and it's comforting. But we're going to make it look rich, Yes. right? So what we're going to do is we'll, we'll add the stock. I'm going to add a, a fresh bay leaf. Okay. And a little bit of salt. And we're going to keep adding that stock. And we'll cook it until the grits are nice and tender. Ah, that sounds great. Well, we're going to keep working on yep. this. And when we come back, we're going to finish this grit soup. And we're going to start on that chicken with collards and cornmeal dumplings. Oh, my goodness. So good. It's going to be great. So come back with us in just a few minutes.
Welcome back, everybody. And if you're just joining us, I'm with my special friend, Virginia Willis. Virginia's been with me on the show now. This Smells is so good. Third time, third time's the charm, right? Yep, third time's the charm. And we are charming up some delicious grit soup. And while we were away, look how, look at that. that smell good? I mean, and it's just the best texture. So now we're going to make it even. Even, even better. More even rich better. and delicious. So this is based on a traditional Italian polenta soup. So first okay. of all, it's not just thin southern grits. So this is thickened. It's got the onion and the garlic, and I'm going to ask you to put some spinach. Okay. And so, I and just so this love is how you this. incorporate a vegetable into this. Exactly. And that, oh my gosh, so I love that's it. that's going to wilt, and it's just the baby spinach. And then you could serve it like this, but I've got a really interesting sort of special technique. Once this sort of wilts, I'll let you keep yeah, stirring I'll that keep for a second. Yeah, keep stirring that. I'm going to add just a little bit of salt, not too much. You can always add salt, but you can't take it out. Correct. And a little bit of pepper. All right, so you'll stir that together for me, please. And here I have two large eggs. All right. And so this is, I'm going to whisk them together. And this is a way to add some richness to the soup because remember, like I said, this was poor people's soup. Right. So people had corn and people had eggs from their chickens. So this, they wouldn't necessarily have cream or things like that. So I'm gonna whisk them together just a little bit. Okay. All right, and then now, I'm gonna take a little bit of this hot soup. Because yeah. of course, if I poured these eggs into that hot soup, we'd have scrambled eggs and grits, which exactly. is good for breakfast, but not for soup. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so I'm gonna, the hot grits and soup is right. in there, and I'll add the egg, add it to the egg and whisk it. And then now, I'm just going to I'll sort stir. of, yep, drizzle it in there, yes. and get it in. And that is it. Oh, I just love the way this looks. It's delicious. And so what we're going to do at the end of this show, we'll get to taste it. I know, I can't garnish wait. it with some um, grated Parmesan ah. and maybe a little smoked paprika. Yes. But doesn't that smell good? Yes, it's just comforting I love it. and homey and easy and inexpensive. Well, let's walk down here yes, because yes. we're going to get started on so a this, chicken soup, right? Yeah, so this is... um. This is my recipe from Lighten Up, y'all. It's a garlic chicken with cornmeal dumplings. Cornmeal dumplings. Cornmeal dumplings. So, uh, I love this. Now, you must have grown up eating chicken and dumplings. Oh, of course I did. But they weren't cornmeal. <laughs> no, they, were, they weren't cornmeal. Uh, so, um, so, we have, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to start with some onions and carrot and celery in my pot. All right. Okay? And then I have um, I bet you did not grow up with collard greens in your dumplings. No, <laughs> no. But you're all about greens in that Lighten Up Y'all book. If you don't have that one, you really need to get it because it those recipes just, you never know that they're light. Right, exactly. It really is just about getting more vegetables in your diet. Okay, so the onions and carrots and celery, we cook those until they're sort of clear and translucent and nicely tender. All right, I'll season this with just a little bit of salt. Do you want me to start adding yeah, the stuff for the dumplings? Yeah, that would be great. So, so that, this is just that's flour, the flour, plain flour. And whole grain cornmeal. All right. Always want to use whole grains. All right, and then you've got some salt. And baking soda. Baking soda, not baking powder. All right. And we always put the recipes on our website, Virginia, that's at awesome. verybeer.com. Thyme. Yes. Just a little bit of herb to give it something different. And, uh, and now we have Parmesan cheese. That's going to give it some richness, and it's also mm. going to um, give mm. it some extra flavor. You've got the butter. I'm adding the garlic to my onions and oh, carrots wow. and celery. That's looking great. I'm going to add. Now some... I'm going to do the milk, mm -hmm. right? Yep. You've got butter milk. Ooh. All right. So you're going to stir all that together, and we let that sit. I've got the red pepper flakes. I've got a fresh bay leaf. Oh, I want to smell it. I love the fresh bay leaf. You oh. can get those. All right. And now I'm going to add my chicken stock. Oh. All right. These then, so are what going we to do, be so good. I'm going to add this collard greens. And when they okay. get bright green, what we're going to do is scoop your cornmeal batter into it. We don't want to do it quite yet. Right. Because the, they, they won't cook it in the right time. 
Well, we are going to, I'm gonna, I think that's just about you right. And when we come back from the break, we're going to finish the dumplings. I'm going to do a little spoon mm -hmm. technique. And then we're going to start on a quick and easy turkey, turkey chili. chili. Oh my goodness. Come back with us in just a few minutes. Ask Vera is brought to you by Georgia Bank and Trust and Southern Bank and Trust. Patty Abshire in Aiken writes, I want to make my own centerpieces for an upcoming dinner party. Do you have a trendy new suggestion? Well, Patty, let's look at this. Something trendy would be fresh fruits and vegetables instead of flowers, especially this time of year. You want to start with a really soaked piece of oasis that you can pick up at your local florist and then choose fruits and vegetables that have a lot of variety and color. Use a wooden floral pick or skewer to insert those into the oasis and just alternate your sides and color choices so you have a good variety. Then lastly, you want to go back out into the yard and pick up some greenery, darks and lights, that you can fill in the oasis that has not been covered with fruits or vegetables. Just pick it in and make sure that you get it all the way into the oasis so the water will be soaked up by the vegetables and fruit. Then finally, just make sure you've taken it and turned it many times to make sure all your process has been covered up. And then something like this will last on your table for days. Patty, I hope that helped you with your question. And guess what? The amazing Peking Acrobats will be in our area. That's right. March the 4th at Augusta University, 7.30 p.m. For more information, go to the Augusta University website. Hey, welcome back everybody and Virginia and I are making dumplings oh with cornmeal. It smells so good. And this soup is going to be fantastic so we got started during the break and I'm just having the best time just dumping these in and you know I always love to say what you can do with your young person and mm -hmm. wouldn't wouldn't your son or daughter just love to be in here doing this, you guys? And so, you can also do it um, with an ice cream with scoop, the ice with a little smaller ice cream mm -hmm. scoops, which are lots of fun. So these are going to take about 15 minutes to cook. Okay. It's, it's really, so it's we've sort got of a few. End. We've got a few already in there. Yep. And we want to put some yeah. chicken in, too. I'm going to put a little salt and pepper on the chicken. And you know, this chicken, every Tuesday, the Fresh Market has their chicken breast on sale for $2.99 a pound. That is a great buy. And let me tell you, go early because you have to get a number. I bet you have to get a number. But it is such a great buy. All right, that's so wonderful. So that's the boneless, in. skinless chicken breast. Right. And, you know, if you wanted to, you could use <gasps> thigh. But of course, this being light up, y'all, I wanted to use the breast. But we just, this cooks. And so the, the dumplings are going to take about 15 minutes. And the chicken breasts are going to take. And look, some minutes. of them are already popping I know, some up. Some of them are already, sort of already popping up. Golly. With the collard greens, and that smell good. Oh man, and that smell good. All right, well we're going to walk down here and get started on the easy beasy turkey, turkey chili. chili. Yes. All right, so um, this I love. It's a great, it's a great recipe. And if you don't tell people it's not turkey for these people, they're like, I don't want to be healthy, which is kind of crazy. Right. right. They can't tell the difference because we've got all these delicious spices in it. Okay. So you just keep that a secret. Keep, and speaking no of secrets, <laughs> Virginia has a surprise, I some do, really exciting news that we're going to tell this big secret. <laughs> oh, it's so awesome. Done. My first, when I did Lighten Up Y'all, I was on here for the first time. So this is my first time announcing that I'm going to have a show on national public television. And it's going to be called Secrets of the Southern Table. It's a food lover's tour of the global south. Oh, my God. Secrets and are you going to tell us some secrets in the well, book? I am. So I'm it's got to be good now. It's going to be good. It's definitely going to be good, and I'm thrilled about it because I feel like, like you and I live in the South, and we know that the South is this rich place with this rich culture and rich cuisine. And sometimes I think that people that aren't in the South, they're not aware of 
what a rich cuisine we have. I mean, there's this sort of piece of southern food, I think, that has kind of become um, untethered in a way. And yes. People think it's like, all we eat are fried chicken and biscuits. That's right. I love. Oh, I do too. I love fried chicken and biscuits. I am not disparaging fried chicken and biscuits at all, but there's more to it than that. And we, we have this 12 month growing season and you know, there's 12 months out of the year, we've got fresh fruits and vegetables coming That's out. That's right. We are, we're more than fried food, right? And so I want to share that, and I want to share the, the Vietnamese fishermen on the Gulf Coast, and the Greeks in Alabama, and, uh, you know, all the different cultures that are part of the South. You know? Oh, Virginia, it is so exciting. I'm and really, on top of that, you're doing the book that's going to yeah. mirror right. the TV show. Right. So, so we'll have... We'll have recipes from the show, and then in addition, we'll have 25 additional recipes. And it's everything. It's like, you know, uh, one of the largest populations of... of Can I be putting this yes, in? Yes, please. Of, um, Asian, Southeast Asian Indians is in Atlanta, Georgia. Oh, so for heaven's sake. there's a amount. All right, so let's, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to back off on secrets because I, I could talk about that for a awesome. long time. So we're going to add our turkey. ground turkey. Exactly. Now I'm going to go ahead without, I'm not going to brown it in there. I'm going to go ahead and add my other ingredients and I'll tell you why. Okay. So what's happening is the turkey is going to sort of cook in the liquid and that helps make it more tender. Oh. All right. So if you brown it, it's, it you know, kind of gets, gets a little It gets tough. a little crust on it. So we're going to do that and then I'm going to ask you to actually add the carrots. Grated carrots. This is a neat. So that's just another way to get a little bit of a vegetable in there. And it's also going to give it some sweetness. And then we have tomato juice. You okay. Can tomato juice or some kind of vegetable juice like V8 is good. Well, she said it was easy and it it's is easy. easy and it's going to be delicious. And we're going to Super go easy. into a quick break. And when we come back, we're going to be putting the finishing touches mm -hmm. on the soups that we're doing. And we're going to get to taste everything to taste and show it. you some beautiful ways to garnish and display. So come back with us in just a few minutes. Well, Virginia, we have had the best time today. I hope you have. And soups and stews are great any time of year. They are, they are. It's a great way to do vegetables. They can make a head, make things in a crock pot. Everyone can make a super stew. Well, and you know, we did crock pot last week, so that's a great tip. So let's get started on the presentation. We're gonna do the chili first. I love this. So I love this like dark, sort of rustic and hearty. So this is kind of a masculine place setting, and mm -hmm. this is going to give me the opportunity to introduce a brand new partner with the show, The Cottage Shop in Savannah, and all of our place settings today, as well as how fabulous the kitchen it's looks, beautiful. is part of things from their shop. So the feathered placemat with the dark pewter it's gray, beautiful. and you know, bring in one of their awesome candles and just the really cool napkin ring. I just love it. It's perfect for the chili. Just great. So we're gonna move down here with our grit soup. Grit soup. Oh, I love it. So we've got a little garnish to go on that as well. And this is another one of our friends of the show, the salt table. And they have all of these spices that they make. I and saw from, what they sent. They're beautiful. And it's just, they make them themselves. Mm -hmm. So it's just really great. And I think that would be a wonderful garnish for the grit soup. This is pretty. And her little grits book. I was so excited because the book matches the place <laughs> setting that we got. You have to make your from books the match your place shop. settings. And um, all of the books are available on Virginia's website at virginiawillis.com. And just having it in the terrain ready to go, already in the bowl, it looks great just fantastic. And then finally, the chicken and collard ah. with the dumplings that were just 
That makes me homesick just I looking know, at look it. Look how puffy they are. <laughs> so we've got some some fresh Parmesan that we're going to just grate on the top of that. But that aroma when I lifted mm -hmm. that lid is just great. Good and good for you. You know, so we've got soup that's handsome and sturdy with mm -hmm. the turkey mm -hmm. that looks great in that. This is really kind of feminine yeah, looking. Yeah, very elegant With the, the green and the purple and then this could take on a casual as well as just a, a Sunday afternoon, mm -hmm. a supper meal with those dumplings. I just can't wait to dive in. Delicious. But you know, Virginia, um, five books, an upcoming show, mm -hmm. The Secrets of the Southern Table, yep table, your cookbook that's going to accompany that, and all the things that have just continued to grow in your life from helping rewrite the joy of cooking to your time with Martha Stewart. You make me tired. I'm telling you, and it, and it is, and that's why I've just enjoyed so much, and you know, we hear so much about empowering women and women being able to do things to grow, and you know, neither one of us, of course, our hair is prematurely gray, correct? Yes, yes. But we're still doing, we're still living our dream. And I love my, I love what I do. I love this opportunity. I love to cook. I love to write. Love to share stories with people. Well, thank you for sharing this time with, with us and coming back with us. You know, I always say, no matter what you do, do it in good taste. We're going to be tasting all of these delicious recipes in just a few minutes. The recipes are available on my website at veryvera.com. So come back and join us again next weekend, and you come back I will. real, I will. real I will. soon. I will. Thanks, everybody. Have a great day.